Dear audience, is there a more urgent problem in the world today than war? My answer is no. As stated in my process journal, this is the global context, this is my key concept, and this is my SOI. As you see, it is estimated that there have been more than 14,513 wars in the last 5,500 years. Millions of people have died and have been displaced. The First World War and the Second World War were disastrous for humankind. But why haven't we learned our lessons and why are we still seeing war between many countries? The most recent one is the war between Russia and Ukraine. War does not only kill and displace people but also affects the human mentally. War gives scars physically but also leaves scars on people's mind, their heart, their soul and causes depression. Wars are way too expensive and affects world economy. A war between Russia and Ukraine is not only expensive for these countries but are also raising prices of oil and therefore affecting prices or other commodities. War also affects the environment. Vast amount of fuel is used in the war machinery which causes CO2 emissions. Beautiful landscapes are destroyed with bombings. Debris and rubble also causes air and soil pollution. Hence, we should look for solution to the problems between countries rather than fight with each other. We should follow the motto of United We Stand and Divided We Fall. This phrase sends a message that with togetherness, the world can achieve anything. But if things are done alone, it becomes harder and leads to failure. Countries should build coalitions with each other to overcome their differences. Genuine partnerships and brotherhood can lead to peace and stability in the world. I will urge everyone to practice the motto of United We Stand and Divided We Fall in their life. And this phrase is not theoretical, but actually practical, as it causes harmony and peace, which is most needed in our society. To express my message in a clearer way, I have also made a beautiful poster and a painting using Zingtangle artwork. And to process the planning of my work, I have made an elaborate process journal. Thank you. My name is Sambi Shavastava, and I'm going to be talking about the effects of electromagnetic radiation. This is my topic. So to begin with, what are radiations? Any type of energy is caused by the movement of electrons. Radiation is the emission or transmission of energy in the form of waves, and it can travel through a medium or even vacuum at a constant speed of light. There are three main types of radiations. Today, we are going to be focusing on electromagnetic radiations. Electromagnetic waves travel from the sun to earth across space and provide virtually all the energy that supports life on our planet. Many other sources of electromagnetic waves depend on technology. Electromagnetic waves have both electric and magnetic properties and will through vacuum at a constant speed of light. It has plenty of important applications in today's world. Here is a diagram of the electromagnetic spectrum. Waves are characterized along an electromagnetic spectrum and they differ both in frequency and wavelength. The seven types of electromagnetic radiations. Radio waves, these are used in TV and radio broadcasts. They are also used in radar systems that help in navigation. Number two, microwaves. They are used in phones for telecommunication. Infrared radiations. Number four, visible light. Number five, ultraviolet radiation. Number six, X-rays. And number seven, gamma rays. Let's focus on microwave radiations. Microwaves are used primarily for communication, including digital voice, data, and video transmitters. They are used in radars for weather tracking. And microwaves are also used in thermal energy to heat food. The harmful effects of microwave radiations. These days, the number of phones and electronic devices in each home is increasing and especially are being used by children and teens. These can cause brain cancer and have other symptoms like headaches, anxiety and depression. Microwave electromagnetic waves are also used in airplane radars and this is why phones are not allowed in airplanes because there is a potential of interference between mobile phone signals and aircraft electronics. Here are some of the solutions. 
The further you are from the phone tower, the less radiations you will receive. You can use a microwave radiation protective device to get rid of electronics that would be too dangerous to have near your body. Here is my bibliography. Thank you. Hello everyone, hello teachers, and hello to our respected principal. My name is Shafiq Rom Eti. Today I'm going to read presence of a cooking oil presence in Indonesia. Cooking oils, palm oil production is important to the economy of Indonesia as the country is the world's biggest producer and consumer of the commodity, providing about half of the world's supply. In 2020, Indonesia imported $4.99 million in palm oil, becoming the 131st largest importer of palm oil in the world. At the same year, palm oil was the 51st most important product in Indonesia. Palm oil impact for Indonesia. Total palm oil export amounted to around 28.52 million US dollars. The value increased by about 10 million US dollars in comparison to the previous year, making it the highest value in, in the last decade. What happened with cooking oil? In Indonesia, cooking oil is getting rare and the price is becoming so expensive. The news caught up in Indonesia is having cooking oil prices because during volatile periods that the price controls and export quotas become ineffective as they are difficult to enforce, especially when this gap between global and local fixed price within. Indonesia palm oil prices and the price rising. By February, the price of crude palm oil CPO had spiken by 50% on year on year, helping to curb retail price of an important commodity. The government in January imposed a 20% domestic market obligations, DMO, for all the producers. The share of output they must over on the local market before exporting. In early March, this was raised 30%. Then, after supplier resisted, firstly, the government a week later did away with the DMO in favor of charging higher export levies on CBO. Why cooking oil is so expensive? The Russia you can call it lower soybean crop in the South America and restrictions from Indonesia are the main reasons for the cooking oil price to rise. Effect of the cooking oil crisis. The growing oil prices in Indonesia become higher. People already sell growing oil since the cooking oil crisis. Everything related to cooking oil, the prices get higher. How to stop cooking oil crisis? It is hard for us to solve this problem, but making coconut oil, this crisis can solve the problem. We can use coconut oil for a while until the situations get better because we can make our own coconut oil as ingredients is not that pricey and affordable. Most of people probably have the ingredients. This is my bibliography, and thank you for listening to my representations. Bye. Hello, my name is Sonam Kataria, and I'm in class 8A. Today, I'm going to be talking about stereotype. What is a stereotype? A widely held but fixed and oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of personal thing, gender identity, race and ethnicity, nationality, age, socioeconomic status, language, and other factors are frequently used to stereotype words. I have made two posters, one online and one offline. One talks about the history of stereotypes, and the other answers the inquiry question. Now let's look into stereotypes. Black, a thug, Muslim. A terrorist, Latino, an illegal immigrant. These are just a few stereotypes that exist in our society. Whether we believe them or not, we can't deny that they're there. Negative stereotyping is wrong. You can't define a person if you don't know. Equating experience with appearance is so arbitrary, just look at his food. Did Einstein's voluminous hair have anything to do with his theory on relativity? And did the hippie moustache of Hitler make him any less of a bad person? We need to start judging our judgments. How to judge your judgment? Continue to be kind. So let's avoid judgment. And there are two things you can do today to help avoid taking this step of prejudgment. And yes, the first is to look kindly upon everyone that you meet. It doesn't matter what people look like or where they really from. When you open your thoughts on judgment, then and only can you move beyond a world of labels towards a world of law. 
The second thing is to look at the upside positive rather than the downside of those who look different than us. It is important that we look at people for who they are. Thank you. I am Samriddhi and today I will be talking about the Metaverse, the pros and cons. What is the Metaverse? Metaverse is a whole new era towards the internet technology. It is a network of 3D virtual world focused on social connections. It is the future of technology which is being developed by many tech companies like Facebook. In the Metaverse, you can play, shop and communicate as if your loved ones are with you, though they are miles away. The basic idea of the metaverse is to put on a virtual reality headset and enter a whole new world of wonders. You could be playing cards with your friends in space. The possibilities of the metaverse is endless, but it has its own threats and disadvantages to our real world. The pros of the metaverse. What a person can't do in real life, they'd be able to do in the metaverse. For example, in real life if a person cannot walk, they'd be able to walk in the metaverse. Forget walking, they could even fly if they wish to. You could travel the world in the comfort of your own house. New job opportunities and a new type of economic growth through the metaverse. It enhances creativity and imagination as they are investing money for creators to build a digital ambience beyond imagination. It will help develop learning and education in new ways. It could make virtual learning more fun and interesting and students would be able to learn more through these new and creative ways. The cons of the metaverse. You start getting disconnected with the real world, the real emotions, and the real relationships. Cybercrime will increase. Since it's a new concept, it's harder to create a new security system as everything is decentralized. Addiction would be a big problem in the metaverse because besides from your essential needs like eating and sleeping, you don't need to leave your VR setup. Living in a virtual state for so long may even make it difficult to differentiate between the real world and the virtual world. Privacy in the metaverse may be a huge concern, as every single thing you do, say, or express would be recorded. This isn't like posting a few pictures online, but this is your every action being monitored. So I conclude. At the end of the day, the metaverse still has a long way to go before it's fully developed. I believe many of the pros would beat our expectations and would go beyond our imaginations. The cons, on the other hand, are still a concern, but it may become less of a concern as it fully develops. At the end of the day, the decision is always in the hands of the people, not the technology. Meaning, if you don't find value in what the metaverse has to offer, don't use it. If you're concerned about some of its cons, you can make the choice to limit your exposure by setting rules and limitations. The power is in your hands to decide if you want to use the metaverse and how you choose to use it. Thank you. Special Theory of Relativity In the movie Interstellar, Kupu talked to his daughter that when he's in a hypersleep or traveling near the speed of light or near black hole, time's going to change for him. It's going to run more slowly. The time he got back, he and his daughter might even be the same age. When Cooper met his daughter after traveling, his daughter became older than Cooper. What is the reason for this? According to Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity, the faster the moving object, the slower the time flows. Then what is the reason for this? The special theory of relativity. According to the special theory of relativity, speed is not absolute but relative. From now, I will show you some Einstein's experiment. For instance, there is a car moving at 50 km per hour and a motorcycle moving in 100 km per hour. When the driver sees a motorcycle, it will look like the motorcycle is moving at 50 km per hour. Then there is a truck in front of the car. The truck will not be moving in the point of the driver, car driver's view because the truck is moving in the same speed as the car. What will be the difference when a man is standing beside the road? For the man, car is moving in 50 km per hour, the truck is moving in the same speed as the car, and the motorcycle is moving in 100 km per hour. Like this, according to the special theory of relativity, the speed of a moving object is relative. In the other words, it is relative because the speed of an object depends on the point of view. Second experiment of Einstein's. For example, there is a dog in a spaceship moving forward in this space and an one meter metal rod 
standing on the floor. Let's say that the light travels to the end of the metal rod every one second. In the point of view of the dog, the light in the metal rod moved seven meters in seven seconds. Also, let's say that a dog watches this experiment outside the spaceship. The movement of the light watching in the spaceship and the movement of light watching outside the spaceship is certainly different. When the spaceship is moving fast to the right, the light appears to move in a zigzag direction rather than vertical. If we straighten up the light, if we straighten up the line, the length is 11 meter, not 7 meter. Only 7 seconds float in the spaceship, but in the space, 11 seconds float. We can show this phenomenon in formula. Speed is distance divided time, or time is distance divided speed. If we absorb the light outside the spaceship, the distance light move change from 7 meters to 11 meters. As I said before, the speed of light is unchangeable. The things that can be changed is only time or space. In the other words, the time increased. According to the formula, the faster the spaceship, the time of the spaceship relativity relatively increases and if the spaceship moves in the spa same speed as the light, the time nearly stopped. It's nearly similar with the time machine going to future. It is called Einstein's special theory of relativity. Thank you. Renewable energy by Dallin Gold. SOI, different types of renewable energy global context, globalization, and sustainability. Different types of renewable energy, solar energy from the sun, wind energy, hydropower from flowing water. Solar energy. Solar energy is any type of energy, energy generated by the sun. Solar energy is created by nuclear fusion that takes place in sun. Fusion occurs when protons of hydrogen atoms violently collide in the sun's core and fuse to create helium atoms. It's a vast, inexhaustible, and clean resource. So sunlight or solar energy can be used directly for heating and lighting homes and businesses, for generating electricity, and for hot water, solar and cooling, and a variety of other commercial and industrial uses. Wind energy. Wind energy enhances a unit by harnessing wind power. It may be called a windmill, wind pump, or wind charger. Wind energy can be used for anything from powering on boats, battery charging, or electricity to be used for commercially. Examples of how wind energy can be used include generating electricity. Wind energy is a source of renewable energy. It does not contaminate. It is inexhaustible and reduces the use of fossil fuels, which are the origin of greenhouse gases that cause global warming. Hydropower. Hydropower, also known as water power, is the use of falling or fast running water to produce electricity or to power machines. This is achieved by converting the gravitational potential or kinetic energy of a water source to produce power. Hydropower provides benefits beyond electricity generating by providing flood control, irrigation support, and clean drinking water. Hydropower is affordable. Hydropower provides low cost electricity and durability over time compared to other sources of energy. Main renewable energy in Indonesia. As of April 2021, the share of renewable energy in Indonesia energy mix is 13.83%, which hydropower contributing to 7.9%, geothermal 5.6%, and other forms of renewable energy 0.33% of the energy mix. Thank you. Today, I will be talking about the effects of water pollution. Water pollution is one of the main environmental issues that we are facing, as there are more than 70% of the earth water is covered with natural gases. There are two types of water pollution, organic pollution, which is caused by excrement, animal and vegetable waste. 
and chemic proportion. It is caused by pesticide heavy metals, acid, and more. There are many effects of water pollution. Like disappearance of biodiversity and aquatic ecosystem. Humans are, are harmed by the operation in the food chain. Cooking will be disrupted. Kills many animals. Aquatic plants and animals get infected by polluted water. Other animals and us eat them and also become sick. Humans get disease from drinking polluted water. Polluted water makes the fertility of the soil reduce. Here are some fun facts. Thank you. This is my brochure. Thank you for listening. Hey everyone, my name is Ahana Bisht. And have you ever thought of just unplugging your mind and hang out in the real world? Perhaps read a book or spend some quality time with your friends and family, or maybe go on a walk outside. If not, I'm here to remind you how electronics can actually affect your lives if you overuse them. First of all, are electronics okay to use? Of course they are. If you use electronics for a limited amount of time, it's great to use and it won't cause any problems. Plus, it can also increase your critical thinking research skills, and much more. So why is overuse of electronics bad for us? Overuse of electronics can lead to a new addiction and it can cause stress, anxiety, physical and mental problems, and also limit our face-to-face -face social interactions. Here's a poem I wrote on overuse of electronics. Research and ideas come up with tech, but overuse makes our mind a wreck. Gadgets are great for using, sure, but over time, our backs get sore, our eyes exposed to the screen of blue light, hurting them, oh so bright. Don't lock yourself hiding inside. Be free and have a walk outside. During this period of generation, don't obviate social interaction. Spend some quality time with friends and family. Switch off your gadgets and make some memory. Get up your gadgets, gizmos, and device. Get up, stretch, and do some exercise. Meditate, relax, and have fun. Say bye to overuse of electronics as we are now done. And this is a poster I made on overuse of electronics. Did you know overuse of electronics can actually affect your posture? Hmm. So what are the solutions? Well, there are many solutions to this problem, but it's up to parents to raise their kids with more physical time and activities and social interaction and spending more time in nature. But if using electronics is a must, they must limit it to maximum two to four hours per day. I would like to thank these links for helping me with this presentation and special thanks to my mentor, Ms. Weena, for giving me so much support and guidance. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Taewon from Grid CE and today I'm going to talk about electrostatic precipitators, a technology to reduce air pollution. Air pollution levels have been increasing in recent years. Air emissions have many adverse environmental effects such as global warming, ozone depletion, acidification, and also has serious impact on human health affecting the lungs and the respiratory system. 
another solution that can be applied to reduce the air pollution is electrostatic precipitator. Electrostatic precipitator or electrostatic air cleaner is a device that uses an electric charge to remove certain impurities from air. This device is used for air pollution control, particularly for removing harmful particulate matter from waste gases and industrial facilities and power generating stations. There are some components of electrostatic precipitator, such as electrodes, 440 volts, 50 hertz, three phase supply, high voltage transformer, resistifier, hooper, or insulator. This is the video about how electrostatic precipitator works. Electrostatic precipitator The carbon and other dust particles released in the atmosphere from industries are removed by electrostatic precipitator. In this method, two electrodes are fitted against the inside walls of the smokestack. When high voltage is applied, an electric discharge takes place across the stack and as a result, air in the stack is ionized. The ionized air consists of ions and free electrons. The free electrons get attached to the gaseous particles moving up the stack. The particles get negatively charged and are attracted to the positive electrode located on the inner wall of the stack and settle down there. These can be dislodged from the electrodes by vibration of the electrodes and are collected in a reservoir. In this way, about 99% of the particulate matter gets removed from the fuel gases by this process. This is the bibliography which I use for this PowerPoint. Thank you. Hello and good evening everyone. I'm Georgia from the GMI school from class 8E presenting about the coffee shops and people's lifestyle there. So, let's begin. Americano, cappuccino, and lattes. Who here doesn't like a cup of that? People nowadays like to go to coffee shops not only to just enjoy a cup of coffee, but to also do other things. But before we get to know about the people's lifestyle there, let's learn about the coffee shops first. A coffee shop, also known as a coffee house, is an establishment that primarily serves coffee. The coffee the coffee shops serve come in various types, like Americano, Espresso, Cappuccino, etc. Not only do coffee shops serve coffee, but they also serve ice drinks, tea, sandwiches, cakes, and pastries. Most of these coffee shops are small, but some tend to be bigger. The coffee shop e industry is a part of a specialty eatery industry. Now that we know about what coffee shops are, let's take a look at the largest coffee shop around the world and here in Indonesia. Largest international coffee shop around the world is Starbucks, and the largest local coffee shop here in Indonesia is Excelso. Next, we will talk about what people like to do there. A long time ago, people go to coffee shops only to grab themselves a cup of coffee. Nowadays, people come to coffee shops to do other sorts of things other than just to enjoy a cup of coffee, of course. People nowadays like to use coffee shops as a place to hang out with their friends, meet with clients, study, and more. According to an online database, people spend one hour in the coffee shop on average today. And that's the end of the presentation. Here's a bibliography and a brochure. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Dear principal sir, supervisors, coordinators, teachers, parents, and my dear friends. My name is Arnav Deep Sharma, and the topic I chose for the exhibition is Smart Irrigation for Sustainable Cities. 
The global context is scientific and technical innovation. Soil moisture is a key component when growing crops. Soil moisture depends on factors such as intensity of water, water consumption or by plants, air temperature, and the rate of precipitation. Low soil moisture leads to lack of growth in plants. Adequate soil moisture is needed for higher crop yields. In many places around the world, there is a water crisis. One of these places is the Great Plains region in the United States. The farmers there use the Ogallala aquifer, but the water in that aquifer is now depleting. There is not much rain in the Ogallala region. In this case, water can be conserved by using sensors. High moisture in soil leads to root rot, fungal infections, and soil compaction, which is very bad for plant growth. Let me demonstrate how this soil moisture sensor works. Currently, the soil moisture sensor is in very moist soil. Thus, the pump is not activated and hence it's not sending water into the soil. Now, as you can see, I am moving the soil moisture sensor into the dry soil. As soon as I move it, some water is pumped into the soil so that, so that a designated moisture level is reached, which is good for growing crops. Hence, such technology is very important in conserving water. As we move towards sustainable development, we must think innovatively to help save water. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Rihanna Keswani and today I'm here to talk about my exhibition project, Animal Extinction. This is a brochure that I have created and this is a process journal that I have created. In this process journal, I have listed my data that I've collected throughout the process of creating my project. Animal Extinction, Grade 8 Exhibition. Animal extinction is a term we use when the last individual member of an animal species dies. Natural extinction takes place because of the disruption of the food chain, an arising situation with their habitat, a mistake in the food chain, and others. However, human-caused extinction describes the process of animals going extinct because of actions done by humans. This includes exploiting animal habitats for resources, selling animal parts, deforestation, and more. Animals we lost to extinction, dodo, stellar sea cow, passenger's pigeon, Eurasian aurochs, great auk, woolly mammoth. The graph of the mammoth extinction, P passenger pigeon extinction, the Permian Triassic extinction is the largest mass extinction in existence. It took place approximately 250 million years ago. The largest mass extinction event in Earth's history affected a range of species, including many vertebrates, many families of brachiopods, gastropods, bivalves, and marine reptiles also became extinct. On land, a great part of the vertebrate fauna disappeared at the end of the Triassic although the dinosaurs, pterosaurs, crocodiles, turtles, and mammals were little affected by the transition. This graph shows that the end of the Permian era is the peak of the Permian Triassic extinction, with 96% of species, 56% of genera, and 57% of families extinct. This pie chart shows that the arthropod species were the most affected by the Permian Triassic extinction, Next were fishes, then bivalves, and other plants and castropods. This is my work cited. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Hello, my name is Shantanu, and I'm from class 8E. Today, my topic is about food insecurity. What is food insecurity? Food insecurity may be a long term or temporary. It may be influenced by a number of factors, including income, employment, race, ethnicity, and disability. The risk for food insecurity increases when money to buy food is limited or not available. What are the main causes of food insecurity? 
poverty, unemployment or low income, lack of affordable housing, chronic health conditions or lack of access to health care, system, sy- systemic racism and racial discrimination. The most common cause of food insecurity is low income. In 2016, low income households were 2.6 times more likely than the average American household to be food insecure. Why is food insecurity important? First, the importance of food insecurity as a health issue is most evident via its impact on nutrition and diet. Specifically, food insecurity indicates not having enough food to eat as well as not having enough healthy food to eat. What goal are we trying to reach here? Our goal is to brainstorm ideas on how to prevent this problem and think about which foods have most nutrition to keep our body healthy mainly fruits and vegetables. How can we prevent food insecurity? To prevent these uh, few, few food insecurity, we have few ways. Number one, reduce food waste. Number two, reduce the risk of commercializing. Number three, improve existing infrastructural programs. Number four, improve trade policies. Number five, promote di- diversification. Number six, close the yield gap. Number seven, work towards defeating climate change. And number eight, donate food and money to the needy. Here is my bibliography. And this is, and this is the end of my uh, exhibition. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Water pollution. Water pollution has reached scary ranges in current years. In spite of the extensive efforts to deal with and smooth up wastewater, in fact, humans have put 1.2 trillion gallons of untreated wastewater into water delivery every 12 months. In addition, 14 billion of kilos of plastic are dumped into the sea every 12 months. If we maintain polluting our planet with the identical rate of 47 percent of human beings on this planet will warfare to discover consuming water with the aid of using 20 water pollutants result on human fitness and surroundings give extreme threats and the destiny of humanity in our planet in this article we are able to element the foremost result of water pollutants at the surroundings and we are able to give a few examples of environmental failures because of water pollutants incidents. There are a whole lot of pollutants result as at the surroundings. However, those results may be summarized within the following elements. The algal bloom because of water infection with nutrients. Algal bloom less an oxygen degree within inside the water. Additionally referred as eutrophication it suffocates vegetation and animals and create lifeless zone consequently releasing the populace of fishes and different species within inside the aquatic ecosystem the result of chemicals and heavy metals at the aquatic life chemicals and heavy steel very dangerous result on aquatic life the contaminants lessen an organism lifespan and its capacity to reproduce. We un- we unload one trillion of gallons of water into the sea each 12 months that is threatening our water resources. The danger of aquatic ecosystem with the aid of using marine particles consisting of plastic 4,000 40,000 heaps of plastic are presently flowing on the sea's floor, which affords an actual hazard for aquatic life. They may be ingested with the aid of using animals and using suffocation, hunger, and death. The marine particles has harmed extra than 800 exclusive species of marine life. Thank you. Good morning to all fellow watchers. Today, I'll be presenting on one of the most crucial topics in the world, war. War is a medium of destruction known when two parties fight against one another in military terms. These occur due to fierce clash of thinking or political disagreements. Wars have been used since centuries and we still see the negative results that are occurring today. It takes away many innocent lives, destroys homelands, and creates a drop in the economy.
The economy that abides in every system of the world can drop even when a singular war initiates. It can cause tremendous damage towards the cash flow of firms since money will be used for military needs. As war comes to place, all their money is used to buy weapons, equipment, and salary for the army. This will also prevent local businesses to shut down, stopping the economy growth. The main result of war is the bloodshed of their own kind. People in war tend to disregard the importance of life and will push to victory without having a second thought. Bombings and gunfights are the common causes of death during war. People are forced to leave their homeland and become refugees in different lands. They have to see their loved ones die and leave their precious memories in their countries. The Russian-Ukraine war has been going on for four months and haven't seen an end in sight. And this all started when Ukraine had a public interest in joining the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Russia's main goal was to take over Kiev, but plans changed. He made a public statement saying that the purpose of the war was to demilitarize and denazify Ukraine, but there was no evidence and the US went as far as to call this mass genocide. Due to this war, multiple cases of rapid inflation and prohibited trading occurred in many countries in the world. Oil is one of Russia's and Ukraine's biggest exports, and since they are both in war, oil prices are increasing and crops such as wheat will also have a massive increase in price. Not only this, the bombings that has occurred between Russia and Ukraine has resulted in an estimated amount of $63 billion of damaged infrastructure, 7.2 million people being refugees, and 30,000 people losing their lives to this war. These are tragic news and will create a huge impact regarding the growth of the nation and getting their people's trust back. I strongly agree that war shouldn't be a solution to claim peace and unity. They are triggered through oppositions and only result in more bloodshed. It is really sad to see that wars have rallied up to the age of innovation. But we can play our part by supporting organizations through donations to help the refugees of war and bring back hope to the peace of the world. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Dia and I'll be talking about environmental issues and concerns. What is environmental issues and what causes it? Environmental justice is a social movement to address the unfair exposure of poor and marginalized communities to harm associated with resource attraction, hazardous waste and other damaging land uses. Environmental destruction is, called, is caused by humans, which is a global ongoing problem. Why is it a problem in most of the countries? The rapidly growing demographic structure and globalization are leading to a number of environmental issues uh, because of the uncontrolled urbanization, industrialization, deforestation, and loss of useful agricultural land different types of environmental issues, pollution, global warming, overpopulation, waste disposal, ocean, as ocean acidification, loss of biodiversity, deforestation, ozone layer depletion. Effects of environmental issues. Number one, disease caused by microbes. Number two, lack of access to health care. Number three, infrastructure issues. Number four, poor water quality. Is there a solution for this? Yes, there is solution for this. There is a solution for this problem, and these are five of them. Replace disposal items with reusable items. The use of paper should be avoided. Conserve water and electricity. Support environmental friendly practices. Recycle the waste to conserve natural resources. Conclusion, there are a lot of issues that are currently harming human lives and we have a lot to learn to start to reduce it before it's too late. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. I want to ask you to fight the plastic pollution pandemic together. Most of our planet is covered in water. We depend on the ocean to maintain our rainwater system. Many population rely on it for food and income. Ocean also absorb carbon dioxide 
and produce more than half of the oxygen, despite its importance. The ocean is on the track. Let's watch this. Over 300 million tons of plastic are produced every year. Half of them is used to design single-use items, such as shopping bags, cups, and straws. Plastic pollution is the most widespread problem affecting the marine environment. It also threatens ocean health, food safety and quality, human health and coastal tourism. At least 8 million tons of plastic end up in our ocean every year. That's roughly equivalent to dumping a garbage truck full of plastic into our ocean every minute. Waste plastic makes up 80% of all marine debris from surface waters to deep sea sediments. Floating plastic debris are currently the most abundant items of marine litter. Plastic has been detected on shorelines of all continents, with more plastic materials found near popular tourist destinations and densely populated areas. Plastic is especially harmful to the ocean life because it can take hundreds of years to decompose allowing them to drift around our ocean without decay. Sea animals that mistakenly consume the plastic cannot digest it, causing clogs in their digestive systems and eventually death. Other times, air-breathing animals, like sea turtles, get caught in plastic products. Here are some pictures of dead sea animals with plastic products inside their stomach. It's very scary to see what's inside their stomach. We can imagine how suffer they were. How can we contribute in fighting the plastic pollution pandemic? As a part of responsible community, we can participate in protecting our ocean. Number one, use fewer plastic products. Say no to single-use plastic, such as straws, plastic cutlery, coffee cups, and plastic bags. Number two, help take care of the beach on your vacation. Don't let our day outside contribute to the destruction of our ocean. Remember to leave nothing behind by collecting and disposing our trash. Number three, participate in a clean up. Help clean up a local beach, park, or roadway, and pick up that litter before it gets into the marine environment. Number four, never release balloons outside. Balloons are a danger to wildlife, such as sea turtles, who can swallow them accidentally, mistake them for food, or get tangled up in their strings. Pop the balloon and throw them in the trash instead of releasing them. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Good morning everyone. I'm Pranesh from grade 8 e. My topic is deforestation. My mentor is Mr. Eddie. Definition of deforestation. Deforestation is cutting down a large number of trees and clearing out forest areas. The various reasons behind these human activities are increasing the space for human usage like logging, expansion for agricultural and infrastructure, etc. Deforestation is harmful to the environment because it causes a lot of carbon emission and alters the natural ecosystem. It also contributes to global warming and climate change because plants release the, the stored carbon into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide when we are cutting down. Deforestation is a severe challenge and we must stop cutting down precious trees. Trees are destroyed to make way for urban development and the cultivation of crops. To expand the land area and construct buildings, houses, we are cutting down trees and the government is trying its best to avoid deforestation. The process of deforestation also increases the atmospheric level of carbon dioxide that contributes to climate change on the planet. Causes of deforestation. One of the leading causes of deforestation is the expansion of cities. People want to live in cities, but they often don't realize how dangerous this can be to the environment and contributes 
to environmental pollution. Other causes of deforestation are urbanization, commercial farming, and a massive pollute population explosion of a global level. As the population increases, people destroy forests to create living space and road. As our want and greed have increased, it has destroyed the environment. Mining is one of the main causes of deforestation and is destroying Mother Earth. Effects of deforestation are soil erosion, wildlife extinction, global warming, and climate change. They also store large amounts of carbon that can be used as a renewable energy source. When forests are destroyed, carbon is released into the atmosphere, contributing to climate change and global warming. Preventive measures to avoid deforestation. To maintain the ecological balance, we need to take preventive measures to avoid deforestation. We humans should take strict action against deforestation and encourage people to plant more trees. In addition, we, we can start growing plants at home and help our environment heal from the loss of trees and forests. Return the love. Stop deforestation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sunny Angeline. I am a student from GMIS and I am in eighth grade. <laughs> my topic will be about water pollution diseases. We all know that water pollution is one of many problems of the world right now, but what is water pollution? The presence of toxic chemicals and biological weapons in groundwater that surpass what is normally found in the water and may pose as a threat to human health and or the environment is characterized as water pollution. According to some estimates, contaminated water make a few million Americans sick each year. Water pollution is the contamination of surface waterways and or groundwater, which can result in a variety of diseases known as water pollution diseases. Nice. These could be harmful to one's health. While we have some influence over the water we consume, contamination of our streams may have long-term consequences by lowering our planet's drinkable water sources. Furthermore, standard water filtering systems are ineffective for some of the new emerging toxins. Water may be commonly polluted by two main pollutants called Number one, chemicals, natural or man-made xenobiotics chemicals that enter a water body and reach amounts that are hazardous to human health. Pesticides like pesticides, chlorinated solvents, petroleum compounds, mercury, PCBs, dioxins, and other persistent organic pollutants, as well as any of the other 10,000s of chemical, chemicals used in industrial processes are all known to pollute water. Two, living organisms. There are two living organisms. A, pathogens include a wide range of living creatures often derived in animal feces, such as viruses, bacteria, fungus, and intestinal worms. Many times their existence in water goes unnoticed. The diseases are typhoid, giardiasis, amoebiasis, acreasis, and hookworm. B, algae. Some species of algae are harmful and can regrow as a result of nitrates, phosphates, and runoff water, particularly agricultural runoff water. This type of overgrowth is known as red tides or brown tides. The diseases caused by polluted beach water or any water are, gas, are gastroenteritis, diarrhea, encephalitis, stomach cramps and aches, vomiting, hepatitis, and respiratory infections. To prevent water pollution from getting worse, you should pick up your litter and throw it in the trash or a recycling bin and don't throw harmful chemicals in the water because it's ew. That's it. Thank you for listening. Wear your mask and sanitize your hands. Hello, everyone. 
I am Bhakti Pandya and I will be presenting on the topic Effects of War on Soldiers and then Family. How Wars Affect Soldiers Many times it so happens that the soldiers have to physically hurt or kill their opponent soldiers. Circumstances force them to end someone's life. This act of theirs brings them deep sorrow. True, the soldiers face their enemy nation that they are supposed to destroy the hostile forces. But after all, enemies are humans. Though an opposing nation, they are after all human beings from regions across the border. Witnessing deaths becomes an almost everyday incident for soldiers at war. Such situations definitely have a depressing effect on soldiers. Death is bound to disturb the soldiers and deprive them on the peace of mind. The effects of war on the soldiers' family at home. I believe that the effects of war on the soldiers' family at home are unrecognized. When people talk about war, they mainly focus on the men at war, although there can be many effects on the mothers and children who are left at home. Having a husband deployed creates stress on the family. War not only affects children, it affects friends and other extended family as well. Children are both affected immensely and differently and it is important for people to be aware of these challenges. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about hyperinflation, the impact of it, the causes of it and the solutions for it applied in the past. Let's first talk about hyperinflation. What is hyperinflation? You wake up one day and see on the news prices of everything has increased 50% or more in the last month. This would mean in two months, everything is twice of what they used to cost. Why is this? Well, this is hyperinflation at work. Hyperinflation is caused by the government printing out too much money to pay for the projects. And this causes people to have too much money and spend more of it, causing prices to go up. Now that we have discussed the problem and discussed this cause of it, what is the solution? For a problem like this, the solution requires sacrifices. Take Zimbabwe, for example. In 2007, the country went through hyperinflation, and at one point, bread was worth tens of billions of its currency. It got so bad, they made a $1 trillion Zimbabwean note, switched to accepting online payments, and stopped using the currency altogether. And this caused Zimbabwe to be the first truly cashless society to this day. Do we still go through hyperinflation? Well, yes. In 2016, Venezuela went through hyperinflation and the people kept accepting the value of the currency going down. However, in 2019, the people had had enough and switched to the dollar. This caused the government to lose control of its currency and not allow and stop the government from having the power to print their own currency. Now that we have discussed the problem, what are some solutions? The main solution countries have used to fight this problem is to remove the power of the government to print money. This was done in Venezuela when the people stopped using the country's former currency and switched to using the dollar. Many businesses started doing this, then everyone started doing it. This is my bibliography. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Hello, my name is uh, Antonio and I am 
doing my exhibition about child labor. Um, what is child labor and why is it a problem? Child labor often means to overwork children and to take away their mental, um, their childhood, which is damaging to their mental, physical, and emotional health. It also usually interferes with other activities like school and just like being a child and with their families. Children should not be working at a certain age until they are old enough. It's illegal for children under the age of 15 to work um, in that sort of way. It's also a basic human right to not work like that. There are different kinds of child labor. Um, a lot of child labor is basically slavery. The, the children do not get um, paid by the person in command. They don't even get a normal life, which is bad for the child, their mind and mental health. Some people even make ch uh, children transport and traffic their drugs and like deal for them, which is obviously illegal. Some even sell their children and their organs or just their organs, which is messed up and immoral. Uh, there are some causes of child labor, which aren't as bad as I described. Hold on. Not all child labor situations are immoral as I described. Some people have to make their children work because of poverty. Uh, poor parents have to make their children work so they have to like pay the rent for, for food and water. There's a lot of gray area when it comes to these things. It's not just like black and white. It's bad or good. It's not like that. There are some, here are some solutions on how to stop these problems. I, however, there are some ways to prevent child labor situations from happening in the first place, such as helping fix up the economy and um, so that po uh, poor parents won't have to be forced to make their children work. Some of these um, solutions, uh, some of these, uh, some, some more attention could make uh, more solutions and stuff because other people can think of that. Here's the bibliography. Thank you.